hello, Miss Elizabeth. Hello, Randall Miles. Hey, oh guys. Goodness. Hey, thank you for coming together on this day to share conversation. Um, Elizabeth, um, are you, how honored are you today? There's no words. I am I'm very honored. I always enjoy spending time with our leadership, but Randall is is a special person that uh, that I've been fortunate to get to know over the last couple of years. And the fact that you're here with us today is it means a lot. So thank you. Thank you. It's Randall, my pleasure. Would would you be so kind to share with the audience um, a little about yourself, your background, share anything you'd like to share with us? Uh, sure. Just uh, you know, very briefly, I'm, I'm vice chairman and chairman of the audit committee for uh, EXP World Holdings. Uh, I'm managing partner of SCM Capital Group, which is a global transaction advisory firm, uh, mostly mergers, acquisitions, and, and, and that sorts of things, uh, and involved uh, with several boards, uh, other boards in addition to uh, EXP serving other industries. And as you might expect, in light of the turmoil that we're in the midst of currently, I am probably in three to four board meetings a week uh, in the context of how to be responsive to the challenges that we face as companies, to the challenges that we face as human beings, to the challenges that we face as we, as we help and are concerned about our employees and customers and, and those sorts of things. So it's actually, it's a, it's a pretty remarkable, sobering time. And Randall, where are you coming to us from today? So I'm in the uh, heart of Manhattan, uh, like you know, probably 75% of the people in the country at the moment, I'm, uh, I'm working from home. Uh, so in Hudson Yards in Manhattan and uh, looking out the window at a street with uh, not a single moving car on it, not a uh, single pedestrian. <clears throat> so for those of you who spent any time in New York, uh, it is a little bit like watching The Walking Dead before the zombies appear. There is nothing and nobody going on. You do hear a lot of sirens. Uh, uh, we're in Hudson Yards. The Javits Center is just uh, several blocks up the street on 11th Avenue, and uh, uh, which is now a, a converted hospital facility with almost 3,000 beds. So the ambulances are lining up. And uh, again, I'll say it again, it's, it, it's a pretty sobering time. It's yeah. interesting that you bring that perspective to us today. Um, I'm in Orlando, and although our state was declared on a official shutdown just over the last couple of days, we st still see people not taking it as seriously. And having family in New York and understanding what New York and Manhattan is experiencing, um, it's a sobering reality that you're living. Yeah, it's... Uh... In, unless you experience it live, um, you'd be hard pressed to contrast it to anything any of us have ever seen in our, our lifetime. Um, in one of the busiest, busiest city, cities of the world, um, very little is going on. Uh, we're certainly densely populated, which accounts for the higher incidence of infection. But as Andrew Cuomo put it uh, just last week, uh, New York is your future. Uh, it's spreading like wildfire. And those of us who are here or those of us who know people who live here all know people who have been infected, uh, all know people who have uh, uh, passed away, unfortunately, and uh, it'll be a while yet before uh, we see the full result of it. Well, as Renee was saying, um, you know, we were talking a few minutes before we got on here, and I think it's a very somber time that, that is sinking in. But yesterday, we've both been self-quarantined about 22 days. Um, yesterday I had to, and I, I haven't been working as far as face-to-face um, -face with clients or anything like that. Everything I'm doing is virtually, and I've been here at my house, and I haven't really even left. My husband's the one who, if we have to go to the grocery store, he goes. He doesn't even want me there, and um, yesterday I had to leave for the first time. I, it was weird driving a car, first time in like almost three weeks. I'm like, oh my gosh, but um, I had to leave to go deal with something for a client on a vacant home, literally taking a key out of a lockbox, hiding it, like no interaction with people. And my expectation was I was going to leave. I had all this guilt that I'm the only one on the road out there driving around doing and not doing my part. And what was shocking to me is how many cars were out, how many people were out. It, it just seemed like people were on spring break. I mean, that's how busy it was in our city that Everybody was out about out and about doing their own thing. And I have a number of friends that are seeing kids still having play dates and neighbors still having parties. And I'm just like, you guys don't get it. Like if we all come together 
And maybe their eyes aren't open like ours are, Renee. Maybe it's not, maybe they don't have access to people like Randall that's, that are living it or our marketing team who's all in Seattle who have been living it and, and fiercely infected by this. I don't know what it is, but I just, it's really, really hard to, you know, take and see when we see what's going on in the rest of the world. Well, I would certainly, for one, encourage people to take it really very, very seriously. We see it day to day in New York. And there are still, I mean, there are lots of people out depending on where you go. People have real lives to live. You've got to go to the grocery store. You've got to go to the pharmacy. You've got to take care of loved ones. You have to walk your dog, um, uh, all those sorts of things. And, um, you know, so there is activity, but it is surprising to see, you know, groups gathering, um, I, I, I don't know whether people feel a sense of invincibility or a sense of denial or whatever the case, but I would certainly encourage people to take this very seriously. Um, uh, do what you can do to, to disinfect, to, um, um, to not expose others, to, to stay away from others who might be exposed. It's just, it's a very, very serious thing. And, and real people are, people are dying and it's, uh, there's gonna be a lot more of them, unfortunately. And let's always remember to keep the uh, frontline first responders and the medical community in our thoughts. Um, if anyone has had a conversation with any person who's in the medical community, you again will be very sobered to the reality of what's going on. So sending them all big virtual hugs. Absolutely. Randall, can, we, can we talk about, I mean, you, you come to us with just such a phenomenal background of experience. Um, and you've mentioned that you have been in numerous board meetings, which I'm sure haven't always been so much on the fun side mm -hmm. as of recently. Um, what, can we get into the economics? What can we be doing as a business right now? What can we, what are, what do we do? How do we lead? I, I feel like I'm a leader too. And we just wake up every day trying to stay in it with clear clarity, but some pos positive. I, what do we do? Well, you know, I, I think that's a great question for all of us, right? I mean, this environment will test humanity, will test us as individuals, as leaders, the same for, for companies. And, you know, when we're on the other side of this thing, it'll be interesting to look back at those who were expected to lead, who didn't, uh, who those weren't, who weren't expected to lead, who did, and how we respond as individuals and as a company. And a little insight into our EXPI boardroom, uh, it, there has never been a, oh my God, what are we going to do kind of a moment. Uh, from the very beginning, there has been a, uh, a sober and methodical processing of what this means for the company, what it means for our employees, what it means for our agents, what it means for those around us. And what do we need to do as responsible leaders to ensure the survival of all of that, yeah. uh, to contribute in meaningful ways to, to helping those who can't help themselves or who by circumstance or, or not as in as good a position. So there's never been this, oh my God, what are we going to, what are we going to do? There has certainly been a, well, let's take stock of where we're at. What does it mean for things like cash flow? What does it mean for our business projections? Um, you know, what does it mean for earnings and a variety of things that you have a responsibility to, uh, to, to, to deal with? And at the end of the day, um, you, you know, I think we're all fortunate to be part of EXP in the context of those of us, right, who are associated with the real estate industry because our business model allows us more flexibility than some of our more traditional competitors when you look at the fact that we don't have traditional infrastructure. We don't have lease payments to make. We don't have the kind of fixed expenses that other companies do, which gives us, which enables a better sense of survival for us and our business model at a time when it's going to challenge vir virtually every model. We have long evangelized that EXP's business model will do every bit as well, if not better in more challenging times. Now, these aren't the challenging times we anticipated. We certainly yeah. expected sooner or later we'd see a pullback in real estate markets and slowing economy and, and, and things like that. So this is, this is far more severe, uh, far more quickly than anyone could have ever imagined. Uh, but that notwithstanding, it is our belief, our firm belief, 
that we'll get through this. Will the business be challenged? Will our revenues be challenged? Will our, our agents be challenged and our employees be challenged? Without a doubt. Uh, but the business model will survive. The company will survive. We'll live to fight another day. We'll be stronger for it. And from a competitive standpoint, we'll be in all the better position relative to those against whom we compete. And I think our business model will therefore be all the more attractive to those out there who are wondering, who've given any thought to where they're at today and considering a move or whatever the case. Once this is all said and done from a recruiting standpoint, setting aside the travesty that exists in the real world right now and looking forward from a recruiting standpoint, EXP will be in all the stronger position as a result of the decisions we make in this current environment. We've seen a lot of um, agents, and Renee and I both talk to people, and I'm, not, I'm sure you do too, outside of our brokerage. We talk to agents all the time because right now it's not about brokerages. It's about community and coming together, right? And, and as real estate professionals, how can we help each other? How can we build each other up? And that's one of the things I've been really proud with EXP, that we've, we've really embraced that real estate community. I mean, we just launched the 60-day guest program and where everybody – it doesn't matter where you are. Everybody can come be a part of what we're doing. And I, I talked to so many people that are just, I don't want to say head in the stand, but they're just frozen. They don't know mm -hmm. wh what to do, right? Um, we, we've kind of been operating this way for a long time, so we still can move forward. But I really love how we're embracing. It's not just us trying to take care of our own, right? It, that's not our culture. Our culture is really opening up our arms and taking care of those in our community and around us regardless of brokerage affiliation. Well, I think that's one of the special things about those who've chosen real estate agency as a field. Mm -hmm. um, Cause I think as, 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 as a breed and I'm not a real estate agent. Uh, so I'll refer to you guys um, um, uh, differently, but I mean, real estate agents, I th think have a great sense of community because you serve communities, not just individual buyers and sellers. Um, uh, many have been at multiple brokerages in the past and know lots of people. And I think part of what EXP enables in contrast to many is that as a national brokerage, we've got the ability to reach out beyond the immediacy of our local communities and reach out more broadly nationally and for that matter, globally. So to the extent that we can be helpful to others uh, by inviting them into our network, irrespective of where they might be, irrespective of the community they serve, the country they live in. Uh, I think we as a tool to help people get through, to create sense of community, to have a dialogue, to, to, to obtain some level of reassur reassurance, then, then th this is a great thing that we're doing, or trying to do anyway. We and, it's, and, it's, and, it's, and it's you guys. I mean, it's the Elizabeth Rileys and the Renee Funks of the world. Um, and, and not just here at EXP who, who are empowering that. So kudos to, to you guys for, for doing that. And one of the, the most gratifying things in, in my association with EXP, and I've said this to, I think, both of you guys, is that every time we're together in large groups, no, this isn't a territorial organization, right? People are genuinely interested in helping people do better at their chosen field. And it doesn't matter whether they're local to you in Austin, Elizabeth, they're local to you, Renee, in, in Orlando. Uh, it's serving people in San Diego, in Topeka, you know, pick a place. It doesn't really matter. The platform enables our ability to help people everywhere. Yeah. Which reference the culture, by the way, thank you for those kind words. Um, I think. Elizabeth and I both just feel passionately about digging in right now and, and, and she and I are doing a morning huddle, which is open to all just so we can launch our day with some purpose and connectivity and, and this is about creating and cultivating that continued community because we don't ever want to see any agent feel like they are alone or putting their head in the sand because they're fearful. So it really goes back to the culture. I find it interesting that, again, apart from the, the travesty that we're all experiencing and, and, and knowing what's going on with, with the, the, uh, the virus, EXP has been operating in a virtual world for a decade. Right. And now 
every industry, nearly every industry, is realizing that at least having a tool in their tool chest that gives them remote accessibility is a wise decision. What I think is really interesting, though, is having a company that now has to adapt to some kind of remote accessibility and then needing to focus on continuing to build culture. Whereas, quite frankly, when I joined EXP Realty almost three years ago, I didn't understand that open-mindedness that you referenced, Randall. I learned open-mindedness from a professional standpoint at EXP. I learned what it means to collaborate at EXP because of the community we have here. So we're already in that culture, whereas you know other companies are probably, in, in all industries, they're probably going to have to figure out how do we cultivate, nurture, and build culture remotely. Right. Yeah, I, I think that's right. I think that's one of the driving forces of this company and, and Glenn's vision going back every bit of 10 years, if, if not longer. Um, you know, there are particular challenges in operating a virtual company, right? The water cooler chat or bumping into somebody, grabbing him and, and, you know, sitting down in a conference room don't exist in the physical sense. So embracing a culture that allows that to happen in a digital environment creates an opportunity for outreach to people you wouldn't have otherwise have bumped into at the water cooler anyway, and creates a, a, a way to share more, more broadly. And for it to work, we've got to, we've got to, we've got to, we've got to live it. We've got to walk the talk, right? We've got to do all the rest of that stuff um, to make it all work. And, you know, for a company that in 2019 reported, you know, pretty near a billion dollars in revenue, I think we've done a pretty good job of it. Uh, I think it will continue to service well in this climate, uh, allows us to reach out to others. And I will tell you that, you know, having acquired the digital platform on which we operate the company about two years ago, uh, you can imagine that the, the interest in online platforms, digital platforms is, um, is, is through the roof. Uh, we already serve organizations like major universities and major industrial companies and branches of the military. Uh, the inbound inquiry as people seek out other methods through which to conduct commerce and keep their people connected is driving some pretty significant opportunity in, in that particular business line. Renee, you mentioned, you know, the culture you didn't really understand. I thought I understood collaboration and connectivity and culture. I was at a company, you know, for 10 years and I thought that's what it was about. And it wasn't until coming over to this platform. I didn't get it. I mean, I really, I didn't understand hindsight's 2020. I can look back over the past five years and say, oh, wow. If I'd only known what I know now, like how, how much more could I have embraced or, or poured into people, but I didn't get it. And it's completely changed me as a person, personally and professionally, right? My, my relationships are deeper, I feel like, than ever before. I mean, Renee and I are a perfect example of that. I mean, you're in Florida. I mean, awesome. I would have never known you if it weren't for this, this company. We've got some strong ties in California and Virginia and Randall in New York, right? I mean, I didn't understand really what we could do when we all come together in a big way. Randall, I have to mention this because when I think about Randall Miles, I think about a lot of great things, but I think about the first conversation you and I shared, which was, I believe, in New Orleans at EXPCon, and you shared with me your thoughts on the unique mindset of a real estate agent when they had an opportunity to become an owner within the company, agent ownership, right? It is stuck with me to this day, and I would love if you'd share some of that thought and insight that you shared with me that day. Sure. Um, the challenge for every company, whether it's a privately held company, whether it's small, whether it's large, whether it's publicly traded, is to align interests in a way that, that people act like owners. When they do, businesses prosper and people prosper in so far as earnings and the ability to share wealth in any one of a variety of things. Part of what makes EXP special is that we have a means by which to actually physically make that happen in so far as our agent equity program and the like, where, where it isn't just ownership in name, 
people can become shareholders, um, uh, acquiring shares at a discount and earning shares as a result of, 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 of productivity levels and, and that sort of thing. And I think that empowers our people, our agents to think and act like owners. So what we do every day, and again, this is the challenge of every organization to help people understand how what they do every day impacts the rest of the organization. And most companies have difficulty doing that, whether it's the, the janitor or the secretary or middle management someplace. How, do what, how does what I do every day matter to anybody else? And when you think like a shareholder, you start to get clarity around those kinds of issues. It promotes collaboration because what I do for you helps me if, from a self-serving standpoint, right? Um, and a variety of things like that. So I think, I think real estate agents in particular are, are an outgoing breed. Uh, you have to be to build successful businesses. Uh, I think by nature, real estate agents are collaborative. And, and the sense I've had since being formally associated with the company is that because there's this ownership mindset associated with what it is we do, that people are, not that I would ever suggest that real estate agents are, are shy, uh, but people are certainly very forthcoming relative to what they like, what they don't like, what they think could be done better, the suggestions they have to, have to offer, uh, almost all of which are offered constructively. Um, and you know, at the end of the day, it's our collective objective to try to do the right thing the right way for the right reason and get this right for the benefit of all of us. And to the extent that we have, have a, a shared you know, ownership mindset, it makes collaboration on every level all that uh, much richer. Cascading effect. Apologize right? for the dog in the background. As you can tell, I'm too, I'm working from home. <laughs> Well, we have, don't worry about the dog. You might have kids running through here. <laughs> I mean, it's like business as usual. It doesn't even phase any of us anymore because we're like, oh yeah, that's somebody's kid. Right. We're all in it together globally. <laughs> I, any, anyway, so I, I think that's a special part of our culture in particular. And it has allowed us to bridge some of the challenges that, that every organization faces. As a business owner in general, obviously business owners see different seasons, right? Different seasons and pivots and ups and downs. What are a couple of things you suggest businesses consider when you're weathering what I would call a winter? Maybe it's a short winter, maybe it's a longer winter, but how do we navigate this and what do we focus on to weather this season we're in? You know, I, I think that's a great question. And whether I'm giving advice on a board or I'm giving advice to a client or sharing a personal conversation with, with someone, my answer nuanced differently is, is essentially the same. And that's to remain strategic and long-term in your outlook. There are immediate issues that we all have to deal with, whether they're personal or they're corporate or a variety of things that we need to ensure that, that we can make it through the short term here, whether someone is experiencing cash flow problems or a business failure or whatever else it might, might be. But the important thing is to remember that we will come out the other side, however discouraging it might be from day to day, to continue to think long-term and strategically relative to what it's going to look like on the other side and how you can position your business to, if not thrive in this environment, which is a difficult thing for anybody to ask, but certainly to come out the other side pre-positioned and ready to roll while others are going to come out of hibernation during that winter, as you described it, uh, and you know gather everything together and figure out what they're then going to do. And we'll be six months behind everybody else, right? Mm -hmm. And we are going to face some particular challenges here, right? We have even on the presumption that we can get through this in the next 30 days or the next 60 days and start to see some, you know, someone, you know, dr you know, cut the tape and say, okay, business can start operating again. The truth of it is businesses will not restart overnight. Uh, it'll take time to get employees back on board. It'll take time to phase things in. You may see restaurants that can only, um, restaurants that can only, um, um, operate at 50% capacity. You will see significant supply chain disruption as now restaurants, for example, need to get food, grocery stores, you know, it, it, you know, companies, whatever the case, we're gonna see it, it, and, and price gouging that frankly will come along with that. 
So we're going to see a really significant period of disruption as companies then grapple with, okay, how do I then come back out of this winter and start doing business as normal? So that's gonna take some time. So I think people ought to be aware that that disruption is coming. And as we operate our businesses and as agents think about their businesses and the community you serve and the relationships you have, interestingly, the whole country isn't on lockdown and we do have pockets where it seems like business as usual. Homes are closing, showings are occurring and a variety of things like that. Other areas, New York being a good example, are on virtual lockdown. You know, showings are virtual only. Uh, closings are deferred, if not canceled. Uh, on the other side of this thing, um, people will start to venture out again. But I would, I would caution, and this is one thing I would urge agents to do as they think about the psyche of, of, of the buyers and sellers you, you work with, um, uh, whether they are wealthy luxury buyers or sellers or, or, or potential first-time homeowners. There will be, in my view, some psychological damage that comes of all of this. Uh, analogous to say post-depression or, or and therapists are going to do really well when all of this is, is done, right? But people will have seen their bank accounts drained. Uh, they will have missed payments, mortgages, rents, whatever the case. They'll get calls from, you know, landlords who have their own mortgages to pay. Uh, they will have seen their 401ks, if not depleted, certainly changed structurally. Um, and, you know, they might have a different view of what discretionary spending means and a different view of now, if I was going to spend half a million dollars on a house, well, maybe if I look at what my payments are going to be, I'll only buy a $400,000 house because I can put an extra $150 a month into savings and, you know, a variety of things like that. So I think it's important to understand as we think about what business then is going to look like after we get through this is that the climate will change people's outlook. Um, and that there will be some psycholo lasting psychological damage. And it's important for us all then to be sensitive to that, prepare our businesses to, uh, to react accordingly. That's one of my big concerns. I was talking to my husband about it last night is, yes, the economic impact is, is great and it's going to be great. And it's going to be greater than any of us really can anticipate right now because we don't know. Um, but one of my big concerns is also the mental and emotional impact that it's going to have and how I hate to say this suicide rates will probably go up and mental illness issues are going to be going up and I think that's one of the reasons why I'm trying to stay so connected with people right now um I feel very connected but I'm being proactive I'm getting up every morning and I'm getting on huddle and I'm seeing faces and I'm on zooms all day long right so I feel very connected but what I'm realizing is as I'm calling all of my clients I'm calling my database and my sphere a lot of them aren't. They feel very alone and very, very isolated and they're not reaching out. And I just have to remind myself, okay, if we continue to reach out and we continue to, to show people where they're even to listen, to, to just listen or vent or what have you, um, that's a little bit of a rope for them because that I think is going to be such a big impact when we all come out of this. Even our kids. I mean, look how our kids are all being impacted too, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm having to be sensitive to that and sit down with each of mine and saying, how are you doing? Like, I know this is tough. I know you're, I mean, adults, I think we have the mentality where we can get past a lot of things. We do a lot of things, even when we're having to put a smile on our face, kids, they don't have that experience behind them yet. So that's a lot of what I'm, um, you know, yes, focusing on my business, but really focusing on my people and just making sure they're all okay. Well, you know, and the truth of it is human beings are social animals right? We as a species thrive on some kind of social connection, different people to, to different degrees. And I think that connectivity then does matter a great deal. And I think what any of us can do, whether you're a real estate agent or you're anybody else, is certainly check in on loved ones, uh, make sure they're okay. Uh, give people an opportunity to connect, to vent, to express their fears, or, or frankly, just to share a laugh. I had a call this morning uh, with someone I've known for probably the better part of 25 years. Uh, we worked together very closely for a number of years. Um, uh, he doesn't live here any longer, so we don't see each other as, as frequently. But yeah, frankly, we spent 30 minutes laughing. Um, and, you know, when things are so difficult to look at otherwise, having an opportunity to share a laugh, to joke a little bit, to, to fuel what we need as social animals, uh, I think is very, I think it's very important. And the fact that you're being proactive with respect to that, 
I, I think serves a very valuable purpose beyond just your own sense of, of, of well-being and what you can do for others, but that connectivity matters. Yeah. Empathy is so very, very important right now. Randall, as you were speaking about different industries and how the re-entry on the other side might look, all I can think about is whether it's today, a month from now, three months from now, we know landscapes are shifting and changing. Even today, agent to agent, we have our own fiduciary responsibilities to our customers, but it isn't about brokerages. It isn't about sides. Ultimately, all parties are human to human trying to navigate our way through this. So I feel like whether you're a real estate agent, whether you're um, any business owner, the empathy to human to human right now, and probably for quite some time, is going to be absolutely vital for us to progress because everyone is processing and everyone will process probably for a long time very differently. You know, I, I think that's that's right. And you heard me say this, I think, earlier. I, I, I mean, if you do the right thing the right way for the right reason, uh, I think there is a little bit of karma in this life. And if, and if the best use of your time right now is to help those around you and help community, that frankly serves your business interests more, in a more self-serving way in the long term as well, without really having to focus on doing that, right? I mean, doing the right thing, I think, matters. People remember it. And to the extent that real estate agents um, build their base as a result of human connection, it's all the more important to do that. And, you know, it's, it, it's sometimes difficult for people to get up and be proactive and reach out when, when there's all this negative stuff around you and all the talking heads on television that are talking about, you know, mortality rates and what's going on and, 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 and how many uh, people have been infected and the political debate that surrounds who's right and wrong and when and all the rest of that stuff, you know, we're inundated with tons and tons of, 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 of negativity. Um, and need to separate all of that stuff and understand that we as human beings, we are going to get through this. We need to help each other get through this. Um, and it's an opportunity, right, to come out the other side as, as better people, as better organizations, and as better communities. Listen to the lessons, because there are lessons that we can all pick up on right now. Listen to the lessons. They're there. They're speaking to us. Well, they are. And, and, and this isn't the first time, right? The depth of what we're experiencing in terms of an e from an economic standpoint is certainly new. Um, but this country lived through the Great Depression. Uh, we had a major market crash in 1987. We had prime interest rates above 20% in the late 70s and early 80s. Uh, we had significant economic disruption in, in 08 and, and post 9-11. Uh, we've had significant financial crises in the mid-90s and, and in 08. And as a society, as a capitalist system, we've all found ways to get through that. The biggest challenge we have this time around is there is a much, much greater human impact, right? Economic disruption isn't just born of people that might have had 125% LTV mortgages that shouldn't have been in the home. Uh, real people that we all know are losing their jobs. We have a financial system that will be sorely tested. I mean, the good news is the Fed is doing everything it can to pump money into the system. The good news is we have a $2 trillion act passed by Congress that is, you know, for all of its shortcomings, and it's never perfect, um, is designed to significantly help insofar as providing more money for, for unemployment insurance, to provide $350 billion for small business. There is little doubt that there will be follow-on legislation enacted to deal with things like infrastructure, to depending on how long this lasts, uh, particularly provide uh, more in, in unemployment benefit or to um, uh, provide more in small, small business benefit. So I think as a as a system, we as a society are trying to do all that we can, recognizing that we need to provide some financial foundation for individuals and businesses if we're to get through this and if we're to get people to sign up for the sacrifices that people are being asked to make. In your time that you've been 
uh, on the board of directors with EXP World Holdings. I'm curious, what has been one of the most surprising aspects of this business? Of this business? Uh, you know, I, it, it, it's, kind of, it's kind of funny. We've, we've talked about um, the utility of our business model, the digital way we interact and do business. Uh, and I first met Glenn maybe 10 years ago um, and have been on the board now for over, over four years. But I was probably a biggest skeptic as there was relative to the power of our digital platform and whether or not it could really replace the necessity of eyeball to eyeball physical contact and, and those sorts of things. Um, and what has then been a very pleasant surprise and has led me to a point where I fully embrace what we're doing and see the psychology of it and how it empowers this business and how it can empower so many others as we think about the potential of transforming the way business gets done. So we've already transformed the way real estate gets done in terms of this, 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 this virtual real estate brokerage, right? That allows us on a national level to collaborate. Part of the enabling piece of that is our underlying technology, to be sure. A bigger piece of it are the, the emotions and the psyche and the expertise and experience of all the people that interact through that. But nevertheless, the technology is a vehicle. So we have an opportunity and, and the unfortunate byproduct of the current environment, right? But we nevertheless have an opportunity to not only think about how we've transformed the way real estate gets transacted, but to participate in the evolution of how work gets done in a more digitized world, which speaks volumes about what we can do with the, uh, with the Revelop platform. So the pace at which that has occurred, Renee, the degree to which I have gone from being a skeptic to now very much a believer in the power of this platform is if you were to have asked me at the outset what my views were is probably what has been a very, very pleasant surprise. Together with the fact that it, it, I find it astonishing, particularly every time we meet as a large group, whether it's in Orlando or Las Vegas, the large committee, the, the, the energy, the sense of purpose, the enthusiasm of people associated with this company, our agents, our employees is, is unlike any other company I have ever been associated with over the course of my career. And that continues to be a pleasant surprise every time I experience it. That's a huge statement right there. It's a, it's a pretty powerful statement. So, and I couldn't agree more. I didn't, I didn't get it when I first saw the platform. I didn't really understand. I absolutely do now and embrace it. I yeah. have a question for you though. Sure. Um, one of the hashtags that we have as a company um, one of many, but the one that we typically use the most is EXP Realty Proud. Hashtag EXP Realty Proud. What does that statement mean to you? What are you most proud of? You know, it's such a great question. And, and oftentimes when I take on a new client, one of the questions I first ask them is describe to me what you do, what your business is in like no more than two sentences. Um, and companies often have a really hard time doing that. They don't know whether they're a manufacturer or distribution company, a, a service, a whole bunch of different stuff. And if the more complex your platform, the more difficult it is. Uh, but it's interests me. I always find interesting how people respond to that, both in the context of then I can then calibrate how I need to, 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 to advise the company, but whether they are responding to me in, um, physical terms, I'm a manufacturing company, I'm this or I'm that, or whether or not they express themselves in more ethereal terms. I'm, uh, you know, we, we're, we believe in this as a culture or this is our mission or whatever else it is. Uh, one of the things that I think makes me particularly proud with respect to this company um, extends well beyond what we do day to day, the platform we create, we've created, but it is, is this company's culture, this company's culture of collaboration, of, of, of giving, of sharing, of empowering, of transparency that then ties back into this feeling of, of ownership and understanding how what we do every day impacts the lives of those around us um, is in an organization where whatever we have 700 employees round numbers and we've got 30,000 agents that, that we serve and we think about the number of 
uh, buyers and sellers, sellers then that our agents serve. In this extraordinarily large organization, when you think about how many lives we touch, top to bottom, that culture that I've just described and that culture that I think attracts most of us to the organization is what I think we as leaders can, can be proud of. And it's probably the single biggest and there are many contributions that Glenn has made to this organization, but perhaps the single greatest because it's driven everything else we've been able to accomplish is from the be very beginning, uh, instilling a belief that we are going to be driven by culture and that culture will then drive results and operations and all the other stuff that we do. Very long winded answer, I apologize, but- oh, no, uh, I love it. But, but that's I kind of the part it. of it. Perfect answer, absolutely. It's everything. We are both so grateful, uh, not only for today that you took time to share with us, but for your time and talent that you continue to contribute and pour into this organization. Uh, we feel it, we appreciate it, we adore you, and uh, we also will keep you and your family in our prayers for navigating these days right now, which this too shall pass, right? It, uh, it certainly will. Thank you both for what you guys do. Uh, all of our agents, all the community, I think it's a very special orga organization. Uh, anytime I can be helpful, I'm more than happy to be. You guys both, uh, both know that, and I appreciate you having me on today. Well, thank you, Randall. And please stay safe. Uh, we'll look forward to connecting with you sometime soon. Great. Guys, be well. Be safe. Take Bye. care, Randall. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.